so it's a free kick. Chance to give the mighty Barcelona something to worry about. It is Charlie Mulgrew. Samaras, oh. and it's gone in! This is staggering! A moment to remember for the rest of your life! Celtic have the lead in the new Camp, and the fans may want to hear that again! Celtic have the lead in the new Camp. Well, I don't care how good your side is, you're going to struggle to defend a free kick of that quality from Charlie Mulgrew. He drops it into the perfect area. They're defending right across the 18-yard box in, in a zonal system here. But he dropped it into a terrific area. I think it comes off Mascherano. Samurai certainly got a nick on it, but it again comes off Mascherano. And Valdez has no chance at all. He's wrong-footed. But what a good ball in from Charlie Mulgrew. Plenty of pace on it. Comes in reasonably flat. And yet, Celtic get a break. Is it going to be enough? That's the question. Well, Spartak Moscow gave Barcelona a scare here. Celtic have just gone and done the same, assisted by Mascherano. But a typically enticing, inviting free kick from Charlie Mulgrew did ask questions of Barcelona. Jordi Alba. Here's Lionel Messi. Xavi. It's Adriano. It's well screened by Celtic. Lisa Giris. Lost out though and now Xavi. Jordi Alba. Alexis stretching. And suddenly loosening onto it. And it's found Hooper. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hi. Hi. Is that Tim? Sorry, yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi, Tim. How are you? You're not bad. So, uh, so you wanted to have a chat with Mr. Green? Yeah, if it's possible, yeah. Why? What did you want to ask him? Well, 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 I just wanted a chat, a friendly chat with him. I feel that I can offer him extra publicity and Rangers fans, they love to hate me and if Charles is wanting some publicity uh, through myself, well, if he does a, a wee chat with myself, it, it might ingratiate himself even more to the, the loyal Rangers hordes and, and I'm in it for just a, 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 a love the fun and a laugh. I, I became a Muslim 11 years ago, brother, about t three weeks before 9-11 and I've been phoning the radio stations and I've been trying to put, I've been trying to put the fun. Tim, if you want to speak to Mr. Green, that ain't all right. Sorry, bro. Yeah, behave. Well, but You've already done us a favour. You were the turning point. The Rangers, the Rangers fans got massively behind us after they heard us your your chat with me. Do you know how many people listened to that in two days, bro? It was about thirty thousand people. I mean, it, it even, it, it even well, I, 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 I don't know how many people listened exactly to the Craig White call I did about six months ago, because a lot of that was on the daily record. So. Chance to give the mighty Barcelona something to worry about. It is Charlie Mulgrew. Samaras, oh. and it's gone in! This is staggering! A moment to remember for the rest of your life! Celtic have the lead in the new Camp, and the fans may want to hear that again! Celtic have the lead in the new Camp. Well, I don't care how good your side is, you're going to struggle to defend a free kick of that quality from Charlie Mulgrew. He drops it into the perfect area. They're defending right across the 18 yard. Hi, good evening. There, in 17 minutes and 14 seconds in a new camp.
the Catalan people crying for independence, and up steps Charlie Mulgrew's left peg, up steps Giorgio Samaras, flowing locks, and Javier Massanano's beautiful wee shoulder, one now replacing his bedlam, it was beautiful, yes indeed. Again, I went to the new camp with uh, family in tow, this time for my 16, for my daughter's 16 year old uh, birthday present. Uh, but listen, what a night was had, what a night. Visca Catalonia, Visca Barcelona. But fucking hell, come on, Barcelona. You just didn't have to win that game there, no? I mean, you are through anyway. Why didn't you know just settle for a draw? Fucking hell, I've been El Clasico after El Clasico. The amount of money I'm a member. And you did this, no? I mean, yeah, dirty schmucks. I'm not going to see you anywhere. You are getting bumped. Fucking season books getting cancelled by you's a membership card. Fucking bang out the order, Barcelona. I mean, they came there, we decorated your city, we never pissed on any statues of presidents who were killed in the Civil War by fascists, where the Rangers fans desecrated. Yeah, I was sick of zombie after zombie listening to old Radio Snide about all oh, what they did against Barcelona. Oh, let's see. The people of Barcelona hate yous. No, sorry, they're, they're too nice of people. Uh, you know, don't judge everybody in the same standard as you. They have people, like somebody on the other night saying, oh, the Celtic fans hate us. No, we just pity yous. We pity your worthless souls, you bunch of dead zombies. Happy Halloween on the 31st anyway, you dumb schmucks. Yes, when Rangers went there, they desecrated, they pissed on the monument of the Barcelona president, Josep Sunyo, if I can pronounce his name correctly, I beg your pardon, the, the fallen brother who was killed by fascists in the Civil War was a Barcelona president, and the Rangers fans pissed on his statue. Celtic fans are loved in Catalonia. Well, this is a Duffin Spelt, Duffin, Duffer, Duffin Phelps, Michael Phelps, I don't know, these dumb schmucks, they're just mad crackpots, they're tripping right out their dial. What we're finding out now, I did a podcast with a good brother, Henrik Larson, and we spoke in depth with the tie-in, with the Bank of Scotland, with the pseudo voodoo economics, the pseudo banking system, the almost a billion pound Ponzi scheme that the Bank of Scotland allowed David Murray uh, to build up. And now let's talk about David Greer. He specialises in leading change and delivering non-insolvency business turnaround uh, solutions. With more than 21 years working in the financial services and asset-based lending sectors, including lead director's role within HPOS, cash flow, finance, and the Royal Bank of Scotland's commercial services. Does it say what lodge he was in? But we can take it as read. In fact, I was given information that his brother is high up in the lodge and old Barhead, Mr. Greer's brother in Barhead. I was told something else, but I can't recall what that other bit of information was, but anyway... Regardless, David had developed stronger relationships with banks, asset-based lenders and professional advisors. He doesn't say how much dealings he had with Mr. David Murray. Not at all, but considering he was worked with HBOS Cash Flow Finance. Now... We don't have to be too clever to join the dots together here. David's current focus is conducting independent business reviews for lenders and private equity investors to deliver integrated turnaround and restructuring solutions. Integrated turnaround and restructuring solutions. What a lot of... Well, anyway, let's keep it clean. David holds an MBA and has an extensive understanding of the asset-based leading lending sector. David also provides UK training for the Asset Based Finance Finance Association and inter and internationality for the International Factors Group 
lecturing on turnaround, recovery and credit management. David is experienced in implementing customer relation management processes and provides non-executive support to growing and development companies. So we are talking about David Greer, who until the ball shooter denies it, I'm taking credit for him uh, recording. I trained him up in the old black arts of recording. And uh, until he comes out and denies it, then I'm taking full credit for leading him down that way. And that's verbatim. So, put up or shut up, Mr. White. It was me that taught you. Right. So, we then look at a blog that was put out by Mr. Paul McConville. Random thoughts regarding Scots law. Dated, I think it was just a couple of days after... Where did you get the date on this? Here we go. 26, three days after the Mark Daly. Well, that was somebody's response there, so it was probably the day after it, yeah, because the article. So whenever it was, it was a day or two after the Mark Daly. And obviously what happened, the call that Shooter made to Greer was done after this show and then it was a case of trying to cover their asses a cover your works what i've always said it's a cover your works always cover your works they were attempting to cover their works bull shooter realized hey if the bull tommy can do it to me i can do it to these fangitas and he ripped him a new arsehole and he's blowing the whole shooting match right open here right wide open and what we want to do now, we're going to bring some uh, some gentleman in here, a, a kind gentleman, who uh, has had dealings with uh, Duff and Phelps. Hello. Hello, yes, good evening. And we have here Mr. Tristan Lockley. Oh. Hello. Hi, Tristan. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Tommy Gold, Glasgow Radio Online here. Uh, I'm fine, how are you doing? Yeah, not so bad, my friend, not so bad. I'm here to to ask you for uh, a part of a, a little uh, series of events that happened back on the middle of May. Uh, I think it was around about the 14th, 15th of May. Would that be correct, Tristan? Yeah, that's about right. So first of all, before for the for all the kind people out there, all the good people tuning in, what is uh, what, what what's your business if you don't mind me asking, Tristan? I'm an investment banker. I do bond trading. Bond trading, do you? And what what does that entail for the layman out there? Just explaining it in as as little detail as possible. Yeah, basically, uh, bonds are just debt debt instruments, you know. So uh, basically, a, a bank issues a bond and. Uh, they give you an interest uh, coupon, so you basically it's like a loan, but it's a debt. So uh, I basically buy and sell them uh, on, a, on a daily basis. You know? And this is your deal, and you deal with high-level bankers on a, as a daily basis, interest Yes, class. of course. These are all uh, double-A rated banks, you know, uh, like such as your Barclays, your Lloyds, your uh, HSBC, etc. Okay. Now, for, for the point of, of, of uh, no and interest and putting our cars on the table, before we were introduced to each other, we did have one uh, brief, I don't, we didn't interact directly, but it was through a radio station, Talk Sport, when we were talking about banks, and we yes, uh, our, our, right. view, our viewpoints coincided with, uh, well, you, 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 I, I don't know if I was on first and you corresponded with it or whatever, and, but, but, but you're, you're, you're well in with the banking sector. Absolutely, yes. And, and can I ask, what, what happened with your dealings, Tristan, if you don't mind me asking, Regards Duff and Phelps, uh, just well, prior. Well, basically, basically, I put in a, a bid for uh, Duff and Phelps. I signed a non-disclosure agreement with them, um, and then I never really heard back from them, to be honest. So uh, it was more like they even they, they should have at least come back and said, "Sorry, you've been rejected." But they, they never even come back to me. So it, I felt a bit affronted uh, and slighted after I signed documents with them, legal documents, etc. And, um, and, of course, I never had anything else until uh, Charles Green actually took them over and I read that in the paper. You know. And you had email, so email contact with them and it was with a Charles Walder at Duffin Phelps? That's correct, yes. And, and he asked you to uh, sign a non-disclosure and this was on a, was it a Friday night of, I think it was the 13th or 14th, 
uh, of yeah, that, May. That, that sounds about correct, yeah. And that, that was just uh, a day prior to when the name Charles Green hit the radar, and then two days later on the Sunday, the deal was signed, sealed and delivered, uh, 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 and Charles Green had bought over Rangers. That was the day Celtic won the, 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 the league. Was it the day Celtic had Yeah, uh, that's that correct, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so so from the Friday, you had spoke to you'd actually spoken to him on the phone as well. I did absolutely about two or three times, you know, but they never got back to me officially. I had to call him a few times. You know? Right, right, and in 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 in, in, in you knew your credentials. You explained your credentials, and oh no, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And the, and, and and the paperwork. Did you did you show him the documents? Regards the the the, the was it the banker's bond you had or the bond the, the, the bond what was it the draft yeah I, I didn't uh, I didn't show him that I just showed him uh, a financial statement proving the, the the money that I was I bid for you know so basically proof of funds you, know? so you showed you showed proof of funds to Charles Walder of Duff and Phelps and this was on the Friday yeah yeah and then they asked you but when seeing that they asked you to. Uh, Sign a disclosure saying that you wouldn't disclose this to anyone else. Yeah, exactly. And I never actually got any information, so there was nothing to disclose, you know. All they sent me was that um, NDA uh, after I'd already proved my credentials and funds. Right, right. So what we've got is a company now, it's been alleged by Mr. White that they've acted inappropriately. And so what we've got here is a case that if they go liquidated, if they get liquidised, and Halloween, when they get taken out of their zombie state, the Rangers, or Sevco, whatever they are. So when this happens, it means that the court-appointed administrators fail to act uh, accordingly to the role of find, doing their best for the creditors. Because why did they rush through a deal? Because assuming that everybody else, that they could go out and check and prove or find out that what you were saying was correct and valid, and if they checked that out, then... They rushed through hell of a quickly on the Saturday because no mention or no name was given. And I've already proven uh, to, to everybody out there who cared to listen on calls to Bill Miller's Club 9 and all the sham that the American bid was there and the Singapore Bill, Big Bill Nye. And uh, even the Rangers tax case hinted today that the amount of people and, and, and who were out there as valid bidders was absolutely non-existent. So here was your good self, who works. Would you? What, how did? What would you define yourself? A merchant banker. What, 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 what's your role? Well, against investment, your, investment banker. An invest, I do bond trading. That's it. So that's well, an investment banker. You're, you're an investment banker. So you're an investment banker who approached Duff and Phelps on the Friday prior to the deal being concluded and showing them your proof of funds and signing a non-disclosure. They didn't go through any other due diligence and they just rushed. Steam long right. ahead. That's what it seems like to me, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and you you also spoke to a, a, a reputable journalist of note, Mister was it Alex Thompson as well regarding this, Tristan. Yeah, you know, well, Alex Thompson uh, got wind of it for however uh, he done that and uh, contacted me and basically uh, I met him and uh, gave him a statement why I was a bit perturbed that I never got even uh, a response or even you know to say sorry we've taken your bid to account but you know you've been rejected. Even that would have been at least um, a closure for me, but I never heard anything back, so I was a bit slighted. You know? And you, you've been reticent at the time to come out and say anything, primarily because you signed this disclosure and you, you are a genuine bidder and you had the creditor's interest at heart because... Absolutely, uh, yeah, absolutely. You, you had a business I model and a plan. I, I put a bid in that would have kept them up, you know, we're not in, down in the third division, so anyway. Yeah. Well, there was there was a serious business proposal. But, but there was serious investors there, not this uh, kid on billionaires with wealth off the radar. There was money uh, to be invested. You're an investment banker, and you and indeed there was a story. Are you able to tell uh, what you said earlier on about how the people uh, round about the Rangers and, and, and stuff that's happened there? Are you able to say anything on that or? Uh, not until I actually uh, get more information, you know, because uh, that, that would be circumspect, you know. Right, no problem, no problem. We won't go there just now. But the, the, So basically the dealings you had with uh, Duff and Phelps at the point you did, uh, would you say it was unprofessional? Absolutely, yes, 100%. Yeah. And and should the court-appointed uh, liquidating uh, liquidation team come in, BDO, uh, they've got the power to roll back everything 
as it's been proven now, or it looks likely that uh, David Greer has seriously compromised Duffin Phelps along with, with Craigie Boy White, then surely that puts you as a serious and only uh, valid bidder who is left out there standing because everyone is mired in the whole corruption. Uh, I have put it across and other uh, eminent people have put it across and it's even been proven by myself because I did a phone call to someone uh, working for Octopus and she admitted that Zeus Capital and Ticketus were part of the same uh, group. So what we're dealing with is that these, is a, it's all a sham and a scam operation, as I highlighted months ago also, saying that it was all set up by David Murray. So what we're finding is David Greer is a kingpin and amongst Duffin Phelps and amongst Ticketus Octopus, having done dealings with both Octopus Ticketus before and obviously dealings with Mr Craig White. They've shot on Mr Craig White. He's come up fighting this week. And so the bottom line is, you, it looks like, are the only valid, credible bidder, Tristan. How do you plead? Guilty as charged? Are you up for the cup? Are you going into the clergy to clergy? Or do you, do you, are you seriously, are you up for this, Tristan, by the way? Because it's, it's a feat. Well, I mean, I always have been. I mean, there was never any doubt about my intention, you know, so absolutely. Well, then, we'll leave it at that and we'll see where it goes. We'll, we'll not say any more. We'll see see what's happening. Mr. Tristan Lockery, investment banker, uh, and, and I bid you farewell and Godspeed and God bless. And, and we'll, Thank you. We'll hope to hear from you soon, brother. Thank you very much. Take care. God bless. Bye. And that was Tristan Lockery there. And uh, Duff and Phelps are seriously compromised. What they've done is, uh, is scandalous. Absolutely scandalous. This is staggering, absolutely and utterly staggering. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi, hello. Is that, I'm phoning to speak to. Is that David Greer? It says, yeah. Oh, hi, Mr. Greer. How are you doing? Uh, hello? Yeah, who's that? Sorry, yes. I, I'm here to let you know that... Uh, well, I, I'm here to offer you some friend, uh, friend and advice, uh, friendship and advice here, Mr. Greer, because I, I realise at times like this, uh, the world, the whole world can seem to be turning against you as your enemy. Um, my name's Tommy Gold. I'm phoning from Glasgow Radio Online. And uh, obviously all the accusations being put against you, that you're the linchpin of the whole organisation, the cabal set up with David Murray, Ticketus, Octopus, uh, the link between obviously Duff and Phelps and Craig White, I'm here to offer you and your good self, obviously people are now speaking out, as a chance to blow the whistle and the whole escapade, Mr Greer, uh, because everybody's getting their say. Uh, why not your good self, brother? Well, it's very kind of you to phone me, but I'm in the middle of something right now, so... Maybe if you if you give me some notice of your phone call, we can have a chat. So um, have a have a send me a text or an email. You've obviously got my number, and um, we'll arrange to speak. But th thanks very much for your call tonight. Have you nothing to say on the matter, no? Nothing to say on the matter, no. Do it by email. Email. We don't do email. We do talking. We do talking. Hello, this isn't an email show, this is a phone out show, this is a phone out show to all the leading participants of the whole cabal that has been set up by David Murray, David Greer doesn't want to talk about it.
Right. Email. How can I email him? I'm not got his email. I've got his phone number, but not his email. Nobody want to take my call at the moment. Nobody want to take my call at the moment. Why is nobody taking my call? Come on and take my call. I'm only left with Tommy. That's only me, Tommy here. Right. Well. There we go. Good night, Vienna. Tommy in Glasgow, radio rental, over and out. Mr. Greer doesn't want to talk. Nobody else wants to talk. They're all sitting there shaking it tonight. The shake is hitting the fan. Every single one of you clowns who are sitting there with the David Murray cabal. Come out, come out. Whistle blow it out tonight. Tommy in Glasgow is here to help. Agony Aunt Tom. Uncle Tom is here. Agony Aunt Uncle Tom is here to take your confessions. Spill your guts to me, because if you don't, the poor poor are coming to get you. Yes, indeed. What well, one of you is turning Queen's evidence. One of you is ratting everybody out. Craig White has fired the first salvo, as I said last week. Craig White. Craig White, swing your army. Craig White, swing your army. Craig boy, as I text you, the open hand of friendship is set from me to you. I'm out here. My goodness, I was nearly phoning him. Don't be doing that now. Who's that? Yeah, scam. I'll oh, scam you. Yeah, mad scam. I was nearly phoning somebody else here. Right, hold on. Hold it. Hold it. Craig White, screen your army. We love him, don't we? So, Mr. Greer, yeah. Obviously, are guilty by association for everything you've done for David Murray, for everything you've done for Duff and Phelps. Well, we are going to BDO. Mr. Tristan Lockery is going to BDO, and we are, are going to tell the world that Duff and Phelps didn't do their job. It's been proven now, old shooter, old Craigie Boy White, He's recorded you, he's trying to cover your works. Caught bang to rights. I offered you the chance here, Mr. Greer, to come on live and put your case. You hung up. <laughs> right. Right, troops. Good night. A wee quick half hour show. I've got other stuff today. You heard it there, the last serious investor, the last serious bidder on the block to buy Sevco Rangers was turned down by Duff and Phelps. They rushed Chuck Green and the consortium through. The whole thing was a set up from start to finish to allow ticketers to come in and do what they're doing. Uh, hey, why should those Celtic fans get in the way of a Masonic conspiracy? Well, I say, well, we should, you know, even although it's, there's no proper justice, they've no brought, they've no admitted the wrongdoing, they've no said sorry for the crimes that they've went before, you know, we, for us to move on as a nation and a people, we have to have proper restorative truth and justice. That's the bottom line. For a big house to stay open, Fuck it, just close it. Get it shut. We're we'll letting a Tesco in there. <laughs> the gold elephants shall prevail. Oh, hey. A moment to remember for the rest of your life. Celtic have the lead in the new camp, and the fans may want to hear that again. Celtic have the lead in the new camp. 
Well, I don't care how good your side yeah, is. Yeah, you're going to speak to Behave, Sorry, bro. Yeah, behave. Well, but You've already done us a favour. You were the turning point. The Rangers, the Rangers fans, got massively behind us after they heard us your your chat with me. Do you know how many people listened to that in two days, bro? It was about thirty thousand people. I mean, it, it even, it, it, it even. Well, I, 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 I don't know how many. Hold on, hold on, where he's gone? He's gone away. Listen, calm down. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Let's see what we can do here. We're not finished yet here. Don't take me for any dumb schmuck. Hold on. <laughs> They're all running for the hills. Can you see them? Can you see them running to the hills? Oh, dear me. What can it be? Oh, do right. Mate, one last person. One last person. One last. One last. Hey, sorry, but I'm sorry. Hey, sorry, sorry. Oof. I didn't mean to press that. Shit! What? Can I phone back? I, I've held a number. I don't know why I answered it now. Oh, I didn't mean. Oh, these. See these touchscreen phones? I fucking hate them. Dear God. Good. Alright, sorry. I shouldn't even be swearing. Sorry. I made an old note to swear. Listen, I'll, I'll leave him. No, I'll leave him, but I did it. <laughs> right, we're not going, right? I'll catch you later. I'll leave it. Listen, it's been a fun and pleasure. We'll get back and we'll contact many of these crackpots at a later stage. We'll get another SIM card, we'll fire it in, we'll put the points across. Next week is going to be a fantastic week. Tune in for all the fun. The liquidation of the zombies. Hail, hail. Catch you soon. We'll finish in all the threes. 33-33 with a Charlie Mulgrew special. Now a Celtic free kick. Chance to give the mighty Barcelona something to worry about. 